Okay, so what did we find? Um, well, firstly, 19 different stories. And essentially, there's no template to fixing a farm or fixing the landscape. But there are a number of principles. So we all need to bear in mind there are no recipes out there per se. But we did find that the case studies that we looked at all included a production or profit increase and they were joined with goals related to sustainability, better health and or a balanced lifestyle. Regardless of the personal goals that our case study participants have demonstrated, they all had uh, balance sheets that were in the black based on either increased production or lower input costs, which is just as important, water use efficiency, building their soil health, maintenance improvement of the natural resource base, and there's some wonderful stories there. The other key point, and this shouldn't surprise any of us, is that the landscapes aren't going to change by themselves. It's all about the people dimension. And often we think that landscape management, we forget about that man bit or that human element. We found that the motivations for change were quite different amongst uh, our case studies. We also found that adopting change was difficult. And so our 19 case studies really are people who are risk takers. And I remember one of our board members thinking of, uh, talking about that at our last board meeting, saying that these guys are happy to take risk. The next guys and girls we need to jump on board probably don't have the same appetite for risk. So we've got to start thinking about how we bring people on with a different profile. We've been able to identify what were the motivators for change. So each case study up front says what their motivation for change was. So you can get a sense of what these people were trying to achieve and what they were doing. We note the fact that a lot of them found their own existing mindset and their own knowledge base as a limiting factor. Just didn't know how to break out of where they were. Some of them have traveled overseas to find out how to get the skill sets. Some have seen something sparked on telly and I'll investigate it more. But their journeys about how they gained those skill sets or invested in their property, again, will articulate, I think, with these case studies, and I commend that part of it to our study because we need to find out how more and more people can adopt these things. Another common point was using the natural systems in place rather than fighting them. And of course, the fact that you can't keep producing beef sheep, uh, goats, wool, uh, forestry, and taking it off the property and not putting something back on the property. You need to keep that nutrient cycle and natural cycles turning around. And if I focus lastly again on the human dimension, you need commitment and you need to take the approach of a trial and error. I could actually be making an error here. So let's observe, let's monitor, and let's make sure we've got a recovery plan for those little mistakes we might be making on the way. There are great stories about soil health in this and I'll leave you to read them, but perhaps to just show you the difference. We've got stories about a guy whose property, 17,500 hectares, 50% clay pan, turned that around so it's all productive landscape, whereas his neighbours aren't in that situation at the moment. We've got stories of soil that are waterlogged and boggy and we've got Brian and Sandra Wilson from down Lismore, Victoria, that was their dilemma. We've got people growing wheat almost in sand on 105 millimetres of rainfall during the growing season. The opposite end of the spectrum from the boggy soils. But they've got a great system in place. So I think we're covering a lot of the stories. We've got some great water stories. John and Robert and I have here today battling a horrendous salinity problem north of uh, Canberra, south of Yassé, and they've turned it round with their great work. Um, we've got water stories where we're now holding water in the landscape for availability for plants and animals. They're great stories based on a whole number of different approaches, so I commend them to you.